welcome back to another episode of Sunday Ballers Bench Chat, hosted by myself, Joss. And as always, I'm joined by Spiffer. How are you, man? Good, bro. How are you? I'm fantastic. Another Arsenal dub this morning in the cup. Huge against nobodies. Who did they play? Leeds. Bielsa in the bin. Oh. Get out. He's trash. Uh, today, we're gonna, we've got a Western Sydney Wanderers pure preview. Uh, it's no secret that we're both Wanderers fans. And since transitioning this show to A-League-based content, uh, we're going to get our thoughts out of what we think of the new signings, some of the departures, uh, what our best starting eleven is going to be, and just the overall prediction of where we're going to end this season. Uh, but we'll start with our Premier League wrap. As always, moment of the week, Spiff. I think it's got to be the drumming at Old Trafford. It has to be, no? It was, yeah. Like, I don't think anything else comes close. I know Chelsea put a 7-0 score on Norwich, but... Yeah, crazy. I think there were so many moments in that game that could be moment of the week, but my favourite moment was just the contrast of emotions from Sir Alex Ferguson and then Kenny Dalglish. King Kenny. It just, it just made me <laughs> laugh a lot, really. Hey, don't forget the sir in front of Kenny Dalglish as well now. Come yes, on. sir. Come and, on. and sir. <laughs> um, player of the week, no surprises here. Mo. Mo. No one else. Yeah. Mo. He's on fire, bro. 10 goals in nine games. Best, best player in the world. Best player in the world. Best player in the world. At the moment, on form. Absolutely. No, no matter is. what T. Garrett says about, oh, Messi still exists. Yeah, on form though. No, Mohamed he is. Salah it's... is the best footballer in the world right now. And apparently, Afcon might get cancelled because Cameroon don't have the infrastructure, which would be fantastic. I was going to say <laughs> that's going to be a massive hindrance to your season when you lose Mane, Matip, Salah. Maybe. But if that happens, yeah, you're laughing. Yep. Uh, Sunday ball of the week. This is where we might differ. Who have you got? I'm going to push again. I think it might be the third time that I've put this person's name up, but Livramento. Again? He has to be in here somewhere. He's such a baller. Yeah. A goal, a got, got a good goal. Yep. Perfect player for the fantasy team. Yeah, absolutely. Big nine points. I've gone Emil Smith-Rowe. Next England squad, he's in it. Gareth Southgate was at the game. A goal and an assist. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our Premier League wrap. Done and dusted. Now, Spiff... Let's get into this Wanderers chat. Yes, sir. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot's been happening pre-season. We've had our first pre-season game sometime last week against the Mariners, 2-0 victory. Yep. We've had a lot of departures, a lot of new signings. We'll get into the squad at the moment. So departures-wise, Costa Grozos, uh, Nikolai Muller, Patrick Ziegler, Scott McDonald, Mitch Duke, massive. Simon Cox, one of your favourites. Yep. Uh, Graham Dorans, Bruce Kamau, Dylan McGowan. Board. Dead ball. <laughs> Jordan March and Kwame Yaboa has gone Pretty to, chase, Kwame. to chase a little modelling career. Fair enough. <laughs> a- any of these names stand out for you? Uh, I think the big one that I'm disappointed that I really wish we would have hang on to was Bruce Kamau. Yeah. I thought he hit a really good run of form sort of midway through last season. Was yeah. re- really carried us for a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just a great player. Really versatile as well. Can play in a number of positions. Yeah, well, exactly right. I mean, he first was kind of de- deployed as like a wing back. Then he kind of solidified his spot in that false nine role yes- last season. Yeah. Sorry, Played obviously 10 for a little bit too. Yeah, he? top goal scorer. Yep. Um, I-, I think Mitchell Duke is just a massive one. Like yeah. so obvious. Um, we see the impact yeah. with the Socceroos as well. Uh, I think we're gonna miss him this season. Uh, obviously, we've strengthened. Adama Traore, Rami Nadjarine, Tom Ahmed could be a little jukey replacement. Mm. Reese Williams, Terry Antonis, Johnny Katrumbus, Dimi Petrados, massive one. Kejiro Ogawa, Thomas Mejias, and we're expecting Jack Rodwell to be announced within the next couple couple yep. of days. Uh, any standouts here? Who, who, who do you think's the best one here? You know what I think we've done really well this season sorry to digress a little bit here but I think uh, we've done well at signing in problem areas I think Western Sydney have had a real transfer policy in the past where we just take whatever's on the market and we just bring in whatever whereas this season it looks like we've filled roles in specific areas last year we weren't particularly deep in midfield whenever Graham Dorrance came out of the team we looked to struggle a lot Um, and this year we fixed that I think we arguably have the deepest midfield in, in, in the league um, yeah, but I think yeah, definitely the one that stands out to me is, is of course uh, Dimi Petrados. It's gonna be massive, uh, and particularly playing has already played against. Uh, oh, well, sorry, under Carl Robinson. Mm. Um, but the big one for me that I'm really looking forward to see play is Rami Nadjarine. Mm-hmm. Back at uh, the Wanderers after leaving the academy when he was younger, 
he you know really sort of like sparked a lot of interest when he debuted at Melbourne City um, had a little bit of a difficult time at Newcastle last season was sort of in and out of the squad couple of injuries that sort of stuff uh, but I'm really really keen to see how he goes this season because he's a baller yeah and and um, I think he'll do fantastic as well I can't fault you on the Dimi Pichardo shout I've seen this guy ruin Western Sydney too yeah, many times facts. playing for Newcastle um, I think he's going to be one to watch for the whole league yep. I, I would seriously put him in the conversation for Johnny Warren medalist at come the end of the season yep. I think he's that good um, you know back home in Western Sydney I think one to watch for me is not a new signing it's Tate Russell yep. you know we, we saw him come into the league I think it was a couple of years ago now didn't have the best of runs last season I think injuries kept him out and I, I, I think we'll see this kid get back to his best um, we've all seen what he can do from that wing back spot and I think if he can nail down that spot um, we'll see him flourish yeah I strongly agree he's a baller Tate I'm a huge fan of his yeah. uh, I think another standout from that new signings as well as we speak about signing in problem areas picking up Reese Williams that's a player with you mm. know vast A-league experience national team experience uh, replacing Dylan McGowan there which is something that was really important because we have a relatively like young and inexperienced back three uh, yep. with Tass and Natter there obviously Ziggy sort of plays in the back three which mm. is uh, really important to us but I think mm. Reese Williams is going to do really really well this season and given that we've gotten rid of Dylan McGowan and Patrick Ziegler um, in the off season yep. important that we went and signed that yeah player. and I think it's strengthening the squad 100% yep. any of these names that maybe give you a bit of concern one, ones that perhaps are going to struggle yeah, I don't think not so much concern, um, but maybe just like a little bit of like why. I think uh, Terry Antonis was a little bit of a confusing one. Uh, I'm keen to see him come back. I'm keen to see what he does. But I think when he was at the Wanderers the last time, he he didn't really, you know, like he didn't really wow us like he did at Melbourne Victory. I genuinely kind of forget that that happened. Yeah. Like, it was a very forgettable stint. Yeah. Adama Traore, another one. I think it's good that we've got a left-footed yeah. fullback, left fullback now. As good as Aquilina was last season, um, and even Dan Wilmering was okay when he came into the team too. I think we really struggled on that left side. Um, so that's good. But Johnny Katrumbus for me is one that really stands out. I think, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, he just wasn't particularly great at Newcastle. I remember watching, I've watched many games in Newcastle because my dad's a Newcastle fan. Um, weird one, I know. But um, yeah, I've watched Johnny Katrumbus just get ghosted past on that right hand side of that back three with Topol Stanley and Nigel Bogard for a couple of years now mm. and I'm a little bit like why particularly given we've got Ziggy Tass Mark Natter mm. as like the other options in that back three so can only hope that Carl Robinson doesn't see that he's fit to start but yeah you never know with that bloke yeah no I hear that I think I'm a little bit concerned about Jack Rodwell you know yeah. he didn't play any football last season he's had a fall from grace, to say the least, um, since starting his career at what, Everton. Then he, he did that big money move to City, didn't he? I think so, That's yeah. where it kind of all started to unravel. unravel. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned just at the lack of football. I think the A-League's probably a good level for him to come back and um, perform. But I'm very excited to see him at the same time, if yeah. he does sign, because obviously it's still a bit up in yeah, the air. Not like, confirmed yet, but it's looking very likely. You, know, you never know. MacArthur could snake us, because at the moment they're a bit, if you can't beat them, buy them. Just in terms of our starting eleven now, what do you what do you think's going forward? What do you think is the best starting eleven? Obviously, we know Carl Robinson's probably not going to steer too far from his little five three two. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I think the shape, as much as you and I probably want the shape to change a little bit, I think at times we just got caught out by it too mm. much last season. But it looks like he's made signings in areas that he feels was necessary in order to make the shape work, which is really good to see. Um, so, yeah, I think, to be fair, we're not going to have too many differences. Uh, I think Daniel Margush has to come out of the team. We've signed a, 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 an international goalkeeper for a reason here. Yeah. Daniel Margush was decent last season, had his moments, but I think uh, ultimately he's a little bit of a liability at moments. times. Moments, yeah. exactly right. Moments. Got done from like halfway against Brisbane Raw. Yeah. Yeah, Horrible. I watched that. That was awful in the stadium. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, uh, new goalkeeper, uh, Myas, he comes in. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of a toss-up between Traore and Aquilina. I'm not too sure where yeah. to go. I really like Aquilina. Mm -hmm. I think he's so, so good. Um, but I think just the fact that Traore is a natural left-footed player, I think that probably bodes well for him. A lot of A-League experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I'd probably go Traore. Um, a back three for me of uh, Nata, Williams, and Ziggy. 
Yeah, I think Mark, again, yeah, I think Mark Nutter again, natural left footer on the left hand side, and he it just impressed every time he played last Mm. season. Um, which is a shame because I thought Tass was going to be that young player that sort of comes through the ranks. Um, but you know, he's still not off the cards, I think he's still a brilliant player. Uh, and then of course, we're both going to have Tate Russell on the right hand side. I think outside of Nathaniel Atkinson, he's the best right back in the league. I've been harsh on Ryan Grant in the past, but he's really, really impressed me these last few Socceroos appearances. I think we really struggled when um, he came out of the squad against Saudi Arabia. I think it was. Whoever we both like. Japan, Japan, Japan. Sorry, Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, midfield. I th- for me, there's only one midfield. Because okay. I, I obviously put my worries about Jack Rodwell out. I think it's got to be Yugarkovic, Bacchus who's been our best player for a number of seasons now, and Dimi in the 10. Mm-hmm. I, so I agree. I think Yugarkovic and Bacchus have a real potential to just be that like solid midfield pairing. And we've seen Bacchus do it in the past, last year with Graham Dorans, and then the year before that with Perman Schwegler as well, mm. where he just forms this really good partnership in the midfield in that shape. Uh, and we look really strong there. So yeah, I think Yugarkovic, and Yugarkovic speaks for himself. He yep. played like 80 A-League yeah. games on the spin or something like that. Like, oh, yeah. Just, um, you know, really well-seasoned A-League player. Uh, always going to be fit. Always going to be ready to go. Uh, but I'm going to have uh, Rami Nadrin in the 10. And that's not because I'm taking Dimi Petratos out of the team. I'm going to put him somewhere else. Yep. Um, but I just think Rami has to play in that shape somewhere. He's just so technically tidy. He's such an exciting player. That ability to find a little bit of space for a shot or a pass. Or yeah. That creativity in the midfield, I think, was uh, is missing a little bit last season. And I think... Troisi struggled in the 10 with not having like wide players like out and out like a, a front three to go to um, so yeah I think Rami in for me yeah I can't complain with that I'm really excited to see him play as well uh, and like we said Kyle Robinson's probably not going to stray from this formation so I can't see him getting pushed out to the wing unless he gets converted into a wing back as we saw with Bruce Kamau could even go to like a, a 3-4-3 potentially yeah. if, that's, if that's the shape change that we're thinking of yeah. and then it's like a beanie on one side and Rami on one side or, or yep. some, something along those lines, you know? So with the expectation of two strikers, who have you got up top? I've gone Dimi and Toma Hamed. Okay. I think Toma Hamed is going to have a great season this season. And uh, when Petralos was playing under Carl Robinson in Newcastle, he played as that second striker next to Bernie Abini for a little bit. It was either Abini or Roy, mm. Roy O'Donovan. Um, and yeah, he just works really well in that role because he just has license to sort of float around and pick up the ball wherever he wants. Yeah. And then everyone else just sort of rotates around Dimmy, which I think is going to be really important for us going forward this season is just making sure that everyone rotates around Dimmy and we work around what he needs to do on the ball. 100%. Um, and then Tom Ahmed, he had a really good season last season at Wellington. I'm surprised that they let him go, to be honest with you. And they haven't strengthened at all. No, they have <laughs> not. Um, they've just signed Gary Hooper, Gary Hooper who back. dead set looks like he's got a pole stuck up in the whole time when he moves. Like, um, but yeah, Tom Ahmed, I, I'm really excited to see him play. I think we've struggled yep. to have like a, an out and out like goal scorer in the past as a, like a focal point of the attack. Juki sort of does a lot of work off the ball, hmm. whereas I think Hamed's just come in here can be that focal point, allow players to work around him, whether it be Dimi or Rami or Troisi or whoever it is, and he's just can be there to put the icing on things in the final third. Yeah, it's, it's a very exciting squad. Um, it's going to be a very exciting season, I hope, obviously. Who was your, who was your other striker option? Didn't tell oh, us. I, I've got Hamid and Abini. Yeah, okay. Because um, you know, I've obviously got Tim, Dimi in the 10, pulling strings. I think he'll be really dangerous uh, just sitting behind them. Kind of, kind of what you were talking about, having a bit more of a free reign because I think Yugarkovic and Bacchus are, are good enough to hold down that midfield whilst Dimi can kind of uh, just be a floater. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'll, mo- we'll move on to, just quickly, prediction. Just, just give us a spot on the table. Where do you think we're going to be? Because I personally think it's not going to be one of those seasons where we're really in a dogfight for sixth place and inevitably don't make it. Yep. I think... I mean, I might be getting my hopes up as I do every season, but I would honestly put us this season top three. Really? I, so th- I, I think we've got to be top three. I feel like this season the top three is pretty iced. I think there's three teams in there that I think just will finish in the top three. There's obviously we'll, we'll, two that'll be miles above the rest, but we won't speak we'll about say, that. Yeah, we'll save yeah, this we'll for save next week's for episode. Um, but I think we'll finish... I think if we, we gel well and we, we figure out this shape, I think we finish fourth. I think fourth is probably the highest we go, I think, to be honest with you. And that's being 
a little bit optimistic, maybe. Really? Given that... So I must be very optimistic. I get I, this, we get this feeling around Wanderer Seasons every year, though, yeah. where it's like, come into pre-season, we're like, yep, finishing top three, we're going to win the league, like, we're going <laughs> to smash everyone, they're all dead. Um, and then we sort of start well, we're like top after like 10 rounds, and then we have like six losses on the bounce, and see, we finish ninth. See, I, don't, I've, I haven't been this excited for a Wanderer Season for a very long time. I would arguably... And if you're being optimistic, then I'm very optimistic because I would argue, arguably say that we can pinch second. That's brazy. I feel like we've got a little bit of shades of Everton about us. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But uh, I am really excited for the season. I think we've recruited really well. Um, yeah, get into it. Season ticket? Got to be a season ticket. Well, that wraps up our bench chat episode 12. Obviously, just a Wanderers chat today from two Wanderers fans. Don't forget to check out the pod. We'll release another episode this week. Ollie's definitely out. Where is he? Apparently not. <laughs> Somehow. Don't forget to get into the Instagram story. Vote for your Sunday ball of the week. And we'll catch you in the next one. Yep. See you later.